Hi, I'm Painter Master Karen Boniker, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to paint this beautiful painting called Sunset Aglow. And it's based upon one of Bob Ross's beautiful paintings, and we're going to be using a new brush set that you're really going to enjoy called Sunset Aglow. To begin, um, you'll notice that I have taken my brushes and put them on a custom palette. And this can be done quite easily by simply selecting your brush category, holding down your shift key, and dragging the brush right out to the interface, which creates a nice little custom palette for you. So you would repeat that process with all the brushes that you're going to be using in this particular tutorial. And you'll notice that I have pulled out all of them here. I have also chosen one brush from the default brush category of the glazing brushes called Soft. So if you're going to create a custom palette, go ahead and pull the Soft glazing brush out onto your custom palette as well. You can pick up my mixer pad at digitalartacademy.com along with custom uh, bonus brushes that you'll enjoy using as well. The mixer pad is also available at the Corel Discovery Center under setting up color palettes to Bob Ross's Mystic Mountain. On my website at digitalartacademy.com, I will have a color set called Sunset Aglow for you to download as well. This color set includes many of the colors that are used in this particular painting and are based upon the default colors, uh, alizarin crimson, bright red, Indian yellow, some of the many colors that uh, Bob used. In this painting, we will use lots of color to paint a lovely sunset with the Sunset Aglow brushes. Let's go ahead and start, and I'm going to actually clear this canvas out. And one of the things that we've talked about in previous videos is what we call texturizing the canvas or applying a color and really getting it uh, prepared before you actually begin your painting. A lot of times um, in this type of painting, and especially with the brushes that we're going to be using, you like to depend a little bit upon that canvas, which is this particular layer, to do some of that actual blending for you as you add additional layers. As I add a new layer and I have the option Pick Up Underlying Color enabled, it means that I'm going to be picking up those colors and actually mixing some of those colors that are on the canvas layer. So if it's white, I'm going to be mixing with white. If it's pink, I'll be mixing with pink. So one of the quick ways to get started, to get something down on that canvas, is to start by either filling the canvas with a color, and you can do that by using the paint bucket option here, or you can fill it with a interactive gradient, which is a great way to start and lots of fun. In some of my previous videos on painting with the Bob Ross brushes, I explain how to do that. So you'll be, want, you'll be wanting to check that out. This time, however, we're going to start by simply choosing the paint bucket option. And I'm going to um, be starting with a relatively soft um, violet shade. And I'm going to select that color. And you'll see it's a kind of a mid violet in, in, in the middle. It's a little bit on the warm side. And I'm going to go ahead and fill that, uh, fill my canvas. The next step is to start on a new layer. The first brush we're going to use is called the Bristly Brush. And um, we'll make sure it's set to default. And you can see that the reset setting is about 78%. You can also remember that you can use this brush as a blender if you take that reset down. And I do this often in this tutorial. So if you want to work with this brush as a blender, just reduce the reset setting, and that way you can blend your brush strokes. But we'll go ahead and reset it to default, and we're going to pick up the color yellow ochre, 
and that is over um, on the Bob Ross color palette here and I'm going to go to kind of a mid uh, color here so we're just going to go around the center of that and this is the area of light so we're going to be developing this area of light that you will want to retain throughout the painting and I'm going to use a nice big brush here and I'm just going to start by creating these uh, long expressive brush strokes here and we're just going to do a very soft overlay of this at first and don't be concerned about taking that color down into the lower parts of the foreground area of your painting it's not important uh, in fact if anything it's going to enhance the color and when we do a little blending it's going to um, really bring out some of that color for you you'll notice that I kind of take that uh, using very light brush strokes up towards the top here because I want to retain some of that and then in the center area here I'm going to put a little more pressure on that brush so I get a nice bright uh, bright saturated area um, and this is our area of light the next color we're going to add is bright red and bright red, as you know, is a very, very um, strong color. And remember that a little goes a long way. So again, I'm going to go right about to the top here and sample this color right in here. And you can see where it, where it uh, suits, sits itself on the, on the color palette here, on the color wheel. And it's a really highly saturated red. And we're going to uh, very, again, very light pressure at first and we're just going to apply that down towards the horizon uh, where I envision my horizon being. And then I'm just going to let it float a little bit into the side area here and then I might go just a little bit heavier pressure right about there. So we're ending up with something very much like what I have here and again we're working on a new layer with pickup underline color enabled. I've created a mixture here of alizarin crimson and phthalo blue. Probably a little more uh, alizarin crimson here to the mix and the color we're after is kind of a violet uh, shade here. So if I sample this and then throw a little up at the top, this is about the color we're looking for. Remember that you can warm it up a little by adding a little bit of titanium white to that or darken it by going to uh, the, the, the mountain mix and adding that darker value. Uh, but you can see here that I have a pretty good mix of that color going on and I'll probably be working more in this, um, in this range here. This value is going to be situated right up towards the top of the painting. Um, I always like to have a little bit darker value up at the top and again a little lighter pressure darker pressure at the corners and lighter pressure as I pull out and I'm being careful because I want to retain some of that nice light value of violet that I see here as well now I'm going to take this brush down to 0% for reset and it is now going to be a blender brush for us and we're going to do some soft blending and you'll notice as I'm working here um, the blending that I'm doing here is in kind of in a circular motion I'm retaining um, trying to retain some of that real light uh, violet as well and then down towards the bottom here I am simply going to just let that color come right down towards the bottom of the painting. I'm not real concerned about that. I'm just going to soften my edges a little bit here. And you can also work in different directions. Um, you know, pull down with your light. Create some nice overlapping areas. This is one of the fun things about setting up your basic area of light. And we'll end up with maybe something really nice like this, very soft.
and that looks about right. The next brush we're going to use is called Sunset Clouds, and this is the brush that we're going to, to use to develop our clouds. Now, for the sake of time, I'm going to do this relatively quickly, but you'll want it at the towards the end of your painting, you're going to want to take some time to go in and really refine your clouds. I think that's one of the my favorite parts of a landscape painting is really working on the clouds to create lots of dimension and form within the clouds. So we're going to begin again with a sunset cloud brush. We'll set that to default and make sure that the reset setting is up on that brush to about 70%, which is a good start. Now, you can work on a new layer or you can work on the same layer. Um, and I, I am going to actually continue my clouds right on this layer where I develop the uh, light. And I'm going to choose the color titanium white and I'm going to start up towards the top here. And these clouds are going to be the clouds that are going to be closest to us. And one of the quickest ways to develop these is just a quick um, up and down kind of motion and do vary your pressure with this brush. Um, you'll want to create different levels of pressure. Um, firmer pressure, you're going to get a higher saturation, saturation of color and light pressure, you get kind of a nice blending, which, um, which can really come in handy as you start to develop uh, the painting further. Now this painting is really going to be about the lake and the mountain in the background, and so the sky we can keep relatively simple and soft. It doesn't have to be uh, really dramatic. Firm pressure, change your brush size, and I'll show you another nice little trick to use with this particular brush, uh, especially if you enjoy painting clouds. Come over to your color expression settings and set this to pressure. And so when you pick, say for example, white, and we'll come over to the color palette, I think that makes it easier, the color wheel here. White will be my main color, and if I want to pick an additional color, and say for example I want it to be maybe something a little darker, maybe on this purple end here, but let's go back to white. And I'm going to select this color, the additional color in the back, and I'm going to think about the color I want to use here. Maybe something about out there. And we'll come back to main color. Now, when I put firm pressure on that brush, I'm going to get that nice white coming through. And soft pressure, I'm going to get the violet coming through. So firm pressure, soft pressure. And this works nicely for um, you know, creating different shadows within your clouds and building on the shape and form of the clouds. And this is the part of the painting where <clears throat> I can spend a lot of time <laughs> because I really enjoy uh, building up the different shapes of clouds and the forms. You can work with different sizes here. real white up at the top here, nice firm pressure, soft pressure, get that, start to build in that form and overlap those shapes, overlap those values, dark against light and light against dark. As the clouds move away from the, he the strongest light source, you know, you'll start to see darker values. I 
and just nice soft pressure and you can do some blending there as well. I picked up a brush called the Glow Blender and this brush I, I really enjoy for clouds as well. It's the kind of brush that you can use to pull out edges, soften edges, or increase the shape or soften the shape of the clouds. So it's almost like an oil brush in the term, in the way that it moves the paint around. Very much like sculpting the paint. We're using the bristly brush now, and we have the brush again set to um, reset zero, so it's going to be blending for us. And all we're going to do now is to soften the edges or the bottoms of the clouds. So that's just a matter of moving in here and just putting a little bit of pressure on those bottom clouds just to soften the edges. I think I'm going to actually drop this now to the canvas layer and then finish my blending. And you don't need to go overboard with this. I think the the point is to just pull those those bottom edges down a little bit. This helps create some nice distance and depth. And already we're starting to play with lots of fun color here. We're going to add a little bit of a mountain range here and we're, we'll decide about where we want our horizon. A lot of times what I will do is um, decide where my horizon line will be. We're just going to begin by painting in A little bit of a mountain range right in here. And again, an easy way to do this is just kind of an upward motion and down. An upward motion and down. Put something way in the distance here. And we'll just let this area kind of move out. At one point, you know, you can always, you know, define your mountains a little bit further. And I'm not, I'm not using any um, particular paper texture here. We're just kind of painting into the area and just establishing the shape of the mountain the way you want it to be. These are your mountains. You can make them any shape you want. And it's fun to just, you know, just add different colors in here. Um, I will use my Alt key a lot just to pick up colors throughout my painting. And then we're going to pick up our bristly brush again. We'll make sure the reset is at zero. And we're just going to blend from the bottom down. Now we'll bring up the reset setting on this one. And we're going to apply dab stencil based on paper. And we'll open our paper panel. And we're going to choose, we're going to start off by working with this one called the Window Frost, set to Random Grain Rotation. And the scale will just keep right about there for now. We're going to pick up kind of a white color here because this actually will go more towards a light violet. 
and we're just going to indicate maybe a little bit of snow being reflected off of the tops of these mountains. And just a very, very soft pressure on this. You don't need lots of heavy pressure. Little smaller brush will pick up the darker value here and do the same thing on the shadowed side of the mountain and we'll create some little areas of shadows and emphasize the texture. You're always bound to find the color you want somewhere in the painting, so use that Alt key when you can. Always creating these different levels and shapes. And again, you can, we'll take this back to default, soften those edges again and drag and blend a little bit further, take that edge way off. violet shade. We're going to bring up the reset setting. About just drag out from the corners here, the right corner and then the left. <coughs> a little lighter value in here. You just want to retain, always retain that light that area of light and focus. I'm going to do a little blending here. And we'll go ahead and softly blend out this area here now. But be careful you don't over blend. You want to retain that nice area of light in the center. We're using the mount, uh, actually, we're going to use the sunset foliage brush here. And I want you to pick up a mid value. Um, that tends to be a little bit more on that violet side. So, you know, picking up something in this area here would be a good one. And you're just going to want to paint in this little area of trees along the shoreline. And we're just going to leave it like that. And then to define that shoreline, you're going to pick up the brush called Mountain define and use that brush by holding down the V key, V as in Victor, select it and create your horizon, create the shore. And you'll notice that by doing that it also creates a little bit of a look of a reflective quality of those trees into the, into the lake that we're going to develop here. Going back to the bristly brush again at reset, zero out and then what I like to do here is just blend up just so you push those trees back into the distance a little bit so we're just blending this soft color up into these trees and they're there but they feel distant now they feel like they're a ways back this is also the opportunity where you can go in and maybe play a little bit more with applying dab stencil and choosing your paper. Again, you can play with different paper textures. One of the new ones in Painter 2019 is Pine Needles, and it does a real nice job of um, creating texture as well.
So if I wanted to add maybe a little more texture down here towards the bottom of the mountain, I could do that. I'm using a brush now called Trunks, and we're going to use that to define the shoreline here. And um, I'd like to pick up a lighter color first and just run that right along the shoreline just to give us a little distance. We're going to begin now. I've added a new layer and do that if you feel like you're a little bit insecure about what you want to do in terms of adding your land plane here. We picked up the brush called Sunset Foliage and we're going to be working with various uh, darker values first. And we're just going to drag out right from the corner here our first area of land. But this gives you a good start to develop and give you that look of, um, you know, the strong look of foliage there. Might even build this up a little bit. There's that opportunity to add that great contrast of light against dark there. We're going to take the brush called Sunset Lake and we're going to do a little bit of edging now along our shoreline. And of course you can always sample the color you want to use here, but actually a lighter value works better here in terms of creating that little feeling of shoreline. we will be working with some darker values as we go into this area. We'll pick up the bristly brush here and we'll make sure that the reset is up on that brush and at this point we're just going to drag down some reflections into the water here and this is where I want to get these in but I don't want to go too far because we're going to be placing some trees as well. And then we'll come back and do some blending after we get our trees in. So for our trees, we're going to be using a really fun brush called Sunset Furs. And uh, for this, it's always a good idea to start with a darker value and our first tree, I think, we'll locate, we'll go with a darker value of green here first, because then we can really play on the highlights. And our first tree, we'll go ahead and position right about here. And I usually start with just one stroke down. And I think I'll add a new layer here. And then all you need to do is start working down in kind of a back and forth motion with this brush. And you'll notice it has a very grainy fir tree effect to it. And we're just going to take that tree all the way down. So you can put those trees wherever you'd like um, in your painting, you know, wherever you think they look appropriate. Now to finish the trees up, this is the basic process that you will do with the trees, is we're going to pick up a brush called the Impressionist Sunset brush. And this is the brush that we're going to use to fill in these trees, to add a little bit of depth to these trees, and to add you know, the basic highlights. Now some of the highlight colors that would be coming from a tree in a bright sunset like this is that you would probably pick up you know, some of those beautiful yellows and orange colors. 
and those those colors um, you just want to lay on the very very tops of the trees where you feel the light would be reflecting the highest amount uh, during the sunset so you know picking up the pinks and the yellows and just adding those into your treetops here and there really is a nice effect you can even use this brush to add a little bit of that look of sparkle on the water where you want it and then I like to use it just to continue to fill in my trees and I'll zoom in on this so you can see this process brush is at default I'm using it using my alt key to sample and then I'm using it to basically go back over the tree I want to retain you know that feathery look of the fir trees but I also use it as a as a means to fill in the tree a little bit further to add um, different levels and give it um, actually uh, really helps to give it a little more shape and volume if you don't want any uh, this this if you want to add a little bit of color variability you can always bring the hue saturation and value settings up on the color variability option and that gives you, you know, the uh, ability to show a little color variety in your brush stroke as well. Resume to build up this area of land by using the Sunset Grass brush. And here you'll want to um, start working with different values again to build up um, some nice form and be careful about the size with this brush you want it to always reflect correctly in terms of scale and you'll notice that I'm just kind of sampling the colors as I go through here and taking that right along the shoreline and a little bit smaller brush here and darker in value You can use the trunks brush to create the look of some tree trunks. I oftentimes will like to add those just for some extra interest into the painting. Maybe one falling down into the lake. Now this step we're going to repeat the same process that we uh, took in this middle ground area by creating another land mass and this mass is going to start just about here and we're going to bring it down and we want to continue to keep this uh, lake view kind of open up this will be our our visual path that takes us into the painting and back to the mountains and then up to the clouds and around so we can have some fun with this in terms of laying in some more uh, foliage and trees and really whatever you want to do. The brush we're using here is the Sunset Lake brush and again this brush uh, has a reset setting so you can certainly use it for blending. It does a great job for that as well. Let's see what would be good here would be your Sunset Foliage brush and then a nice lighter value on the edges here and you can use this brush at larger sizes too you don't have to use it real small um, it's just a real nice brush for creating that look of just delicate foliage along the edge of the lake
and anywhere where you want to fill in and show a little bit of contrast. You can even go bigger here. And really fill that in. You can use it for creating that kind of look of maybe some rocky areas along the side of this landmass. And of course, if you set it to pick up <clears throat> paper texture, you can add even more of a textural effect there. And again, we want to show lots of contrast here. So start our tree right about here. And sometimes I'll just simply draw out maybe a little bit of a shape of a, where I want that tree, just so I get a good idea of where to, where to place it. And then start really simply putting in my branches. And remember that these trees are up against a sunset, so the contrast here is going to be real strong. So you can get away with using a darker value against that nice bright sunset. And you're going to use the Impressionist sunset brush to do your fill-in. Be sure to add some highlights to your trees, but don't go too light, otherwise you'll lose that real strong contrast that you want between the sunset and the trees. We're always going to get a little more cast light over on these trees, so you can play with color a little more on these trees. These try to keep that darker value where you keep that strong, that nice strong contrast. And then I would go to the sunset foliage again, and uh, this time um, use it in a, just to fill in. Um, go ahead and fill in and add some additional foliage under the trees. Build that area up. If Bob were painting this, he'd be adding flowers right now. So don't be shy about doing that either. A brush you could use for the flowers would be in the Mystic Mountain Brush Pack. And you could use the flower brush, Happy Flowers, I believe it's called. And then finally, uh, pick up um, I think the sunset grasses and do a little bit of work with your grass brush here. This one you want to work up and down and side to side. So for taller blades you're going to go up and just to bring that across go from side to side. Again you want good contrast there so you can always go a little bit darker And then watch your scale because anything closer to us here, we can afford to be a little more detailed. But as we move into the distance here, the brush should become smaller and you can play a little bit with your scale and, and some value changes there as well. So this part of it would be very, very subtle. These grasses in the foreground, you, again, you can afford to go a little bit bigger. And that light against dark and dark against light value change is real important. Using the trunks brush, again, you can use that brush just to um, 
you know, if you want to add some tree trunks in here at certain parts, it's a good brush to use. Very expressive. Don't, you know, don't go overboard with it either. And then finally, um, I think what I would do here for the last part of this painting would be to again go to the Sunset Cloud brush and perhaps put in a little darker value of clouds right across this particular area of the painting. I think what this will do is create a little more distance in the painting. At this point you would have that opportunity to go back into your painting, step back from it now, review it a little bit, see where you need to increase value, where you need to make things darker or lighter. Do you have enough reflective quality going on? Are your values holding together? And uh, you know, play with your clouds some more if you want to do some more blending up in the clouds. Um, you could certainly have fun with that as well. Um, there is one brush here called Cloud Fusion that um, you can also use, uh, use it sparingly. Um, I'm going to go ahead and drop this layer and if you use it on the edges it'll just soften the edges. Okay, It adds a little bit of texture but it does soften the edges and pretty much infuses, gives a very soft, muted look. So you may want that in certain parts of the painting. Um, so you have to kind of evaluate that and see where this brush might work. Um, I would probably not stop at this point. I would still want to work further on my clouds and go into it a little bit more. Um, I just enjoy forming clouds, so that would be a part that I would want to uh, work on. I know that I need um, one last thing here, I, I would need probably a little bit more reflection in the lake um, and the brush that I would use for that. Um, I'd use the bristle, bristly brush and sample this white here, but I'm going to go to a little lighter value of that, a little uh, more saturated value of that if I put it into the lake category, the sparkle on the water, and it is one of my favorite brushes. And I use it quite often just for this purpose, just to work with um, reflective qualities, especially if you're working, you know, with a lake scene or something like this where you need some strong reflections going on. Um, I did use it in these lower parts of the painting here, and again, you can create some nice contrast there. The final brush that we're going to use here, uh, I mentioned at the start of the tutorial, is the Soft Glazing Brush. And this is the brush that brings all those beautiful glowing effects of the sunset onto the elements within the foreground area here. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this layer here. You can work directly on the canvas layer when you use this brush, or if you want to have more control over the opacity and also work with composite methods, then you can go ahead and add a new layer. Now I want to pick up this, I'm going to use my Alt key to sample this orange color from, this was our area of a light. Um, and I'm just going to let that color kind of migrate up under these clouds and go up a little bit higher to the point where I'm actually coming over the very tip tops of the trees. And I may even play a little bit with it down on these lower areas as well. This brush um, just adds a beautiful soft glow to your painting. It also will help you to understand if there's any areas where you need to increase value, where some areas have gotten maybe too light or too dark, um, or where you may need to darken some of, the, some of the areas as well. So use it sparingly. 
um, but use it for that purpose to create that additional glow uh, within the tops and right beneath your clouds that you've created here and open up that area of light um, let it flow into certain parts of the painting where you you know really want to show a little bit more of that glow then being able to work on a layer you can also bring the opacity down if you've gone overboard uh, with it and um, that is a nice um, option that you have so I hope you enjoyed this tutor tutorial on using the Sunset Aglow brush pack for Painter 2019 and uh, Painter Essentials. And I will talk to you soon and I look forward to seeing your work. Take care.